Hey there folks and welcome to this video, this one here is talking about F1 3 Races 1 display ahead of the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. For those of you unfamiliar with what it is, it's something that happens just before the race starts. Um, it's part of like their pre-race build-up proceedings. And essentially what happens is F1 plays out a pre-recorded message, it's about a minute long, um, involving all the drivers. And uh, then they have 20 or so seconds to do a gesture they feel is fit. It started off last season after the murder of uh, George Floyd by Derek Chauvin as an end racism display organised by the F1 Grand Prix Drivers Association uh, proposed by the then heads of Romain Grosjean and Sebastian Vettel. Uh, nowadays it's George Russell and Sebastian Vettel. And it started off with 14 drivers kneeling and 6 standing. This season it's been about 50-50 as you can see here. But... There are all kinds of other issues that tie F1 to the wider world of politics, and that's something that F1's chosen to do as an organisation in the past 18 months. And that's why it gets to a space more and more where I personally feel these conversations should be, have, be being had. I mean, it's something that I feel anyways, but it's something that is more so the case after... F1 has decided this is the direction it's going to take. Uh, the We Races 1 uh, message nowadays includes like pillars such as sustainability. So, for example, I worked in the F1 paddock for the British Grand Prix. And this lanyard here and all the materials in it are supposed to be recyclable and sustainable. And made from recycled products. But F1 has found itself in kind of scandal after scandal. Um... Drivers especially, Carlos Sainz being accused of racism in early 2020. Um, his family being accused of racism in early 2021. There's also just the existence of Nikita Mazepin on the F1 grid after video surfaced this time last year of him groping a woman. And that was on his Instagram feed, which he has since gone on to say damaged him. Which is the weirdest example of victim blaming I've ever seen. And, well, there are two instances that we can talk about today. The first is Mercedes announcing Kingspan as a sponsor. Kingspan is a company who uh, make materials to go into things such as cladding. And Kingspan materials were part of uh, Grenfell Tower. For those of you who aren't aware of what Grenfell Tower is or was, it was a block of apartments here in the UK in London that in early 2017 caught fire and killed dozens of people. The fire supposedly spread as much as it did and engulfed the whole tower because of the materials that were in the cladding. Um, it wasn't flame proof in fact it was seen to have spread the flames and made an issue that started off as a small fire inside of one apartment engulf the whole building. It's one of the biggest tragedies in present-day Britain. And... Yeah, Kingspan provided a lot of the materials that went into it. Materials that were sold through shady marketing techniques weren't actually supposed to go into the kind of positions that it did in terms of the cladding and the facing for the building and Kingspan's response has been that they don't want to talk about it that they feel like they've distanced themselves a lot from it that they weren't the ones who put the cladding there and then since then Merck has announced them as a sponsor now, Merck won't have announced it without Mercedes themselves as a company being okay with it. And if we're talking about shady sponsors that Mercedes has, look at the two biggest ones, namely Petronas, Petrochemicals, and the businesses they've conducted around the world. You would rise violations and to the tune of that. So... What annoys me more is seeing articles like in The Guardian where they call it Lewis Hamilton's deal. 
and talk about how the British government have said to Mercedes to reconsider. Firstly, it was a British government or local governments that are of the same party who put that cladding in in the first place. Knowing, to a degree, the risks that came with putting such cladding in, because they were cutting costs. And they cut costs putting the cladding in because they wanted to make it look nicer. Because uh, because Grenfell Tower is within eyeline of one of the major motorways in the UK. So they wanted to make it look nicer and they didn't care about the risks that came with that. So there's some cheek coming from the Conservative Party deciding to criticise Mercedes for it. I mean, we know Kingspan materials are still on cladding in apartment blocks and other buildings across the country. It hasn't been taken down, even in the four and a half years since the tragedy at Grenfell. So, it's in part, Mercedes should really reconsider, especially the kind of optics of it. And secondly, the media just... Why are you playing, playing it towards Lewis? And why are we expecting Lewis to be in a position where he can speak up? It's going to be in his contract. Don't talk bad about sponsors. I have I worked in retail for five years. And one of the things I always know is if you talk badly about something that's to do with a company, you're going to get sacked no matter how um, indispensable you see to that company. And... Yeah, that, that's one of my main feelings from it, is that you, we can't expect Lewis to speak up because he can't do it about Petronas. But what we can do is hope to see more activism in places like Saudi Arabia, where F1 is this week. And F1, and a lot of people in F1 like to talk about the kind of liberalising effect. So by bringing F1 to these countries, we can shine a light on the issues that are there. There was, I think, Daniel Ricciardo quite poorly talked about the issues in terms of speaking about it in terms of bad stuff and negativity. When he should be taking more steps into trying to educate himself on the issues. It's what he's been saying that he's been doing for the past 18 months, so he should be taking more of those steps. The two biggest champions have been Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. It was Hamilton with his uh, Pride-themed helmet and Sebastian Vettel wearing Pride-themed shoes talking about LGBT plus issues in Saudi Arabia. And Vettel and Lewis have educated themselves on the issues and they talk about it openly. They talked about it in press commitments, interviews about how, for example, there are women in Saudi Arabia who are still in prison for driving, for simply driving. They were the biggest campaigns between giving women the right to be able to drive in Saudi Arabia. And they're still in prison. The Dakar passed by that prison uh, in this year's edition in Saudi Arabia. Those women still aren't free, even though women have the right to drive now. And LGBT rights are non-existent. Discrimination is rampant. And... I'd like to believe what people are saying, F1 can have a liberalising effect, but I don't believe that's true. Because F1's raced in China, it still races in Russia, it races in Hungary. And in Hungary this season, for Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel saying gay rights, literally, they just were like, it's bad what the Hungarian government is doing, the LGBT people. They got threats from the Hungarian government. They didn't bring any kind of change. There was no change brought through by what they did. And it doesn't happen when they're in Russia. It didn't, didn't happen when everyone went to China. It won't happen in Qatar. It won't happen in Saudi Arabia. We still go to Bahrain, even though uh, the 2011 race was cancelled because of the Arab Spring. And 2012 was held under a cloud of those protests were still ongoing. And what the Bahraini government did was horrible. My feeling is if F1 genuinely has this liberalistic effect, we would have a race in somewhere like Iran or Afghanistan or Belarus. There are some changes that are made. So motorsport's already really gone to Saudi Arabia because it's given women the right to drive. But it's not pushing for the greater changes. Like it existing does so much. It has to actively push for these changes. 
F1 races in places return to Turkey. There are a lot of authoritarian countries where F1 chooses to race, and it doesn't choose to use its platform to preach progressivism as it claims it does. It's not even much of a liberalizing force. So, my message from there is to F1 itself practice what you preach. And on that note, thank you for watching.